fine. Okay. Okay, so um, uh, Pentecost University spends, we are going to go through the productivity questions in the, in the assignment. That's question one and two. Okay, so we are told that Pentecost University spends 133 Ghana cities semester credit hour, student tuition. The Church of Pentecost supplements school revenue by 100 Ghana cities per semester credit hour. Average class size for a typical three credit course is 60 students. Labor course are 6,000 per class. Material course, 100 per student per class. Overhead course is 15,000 per class. You have to compute the multi-factor productivity ratio for this course. Delivery process. So one thing I want you to observe is how the solution is presented. In examination, you have to break out any uh, question. Please do it step by step. Is that okay? Yes. Yeah. Uh, you do it step by step, and that will make it uh, very uh, visible for the examiner as well to see your steps. You are not just interested in the answers, but how you got the answers. And marks are awarded for steps as well, not just the answers. Is that okay? So first of all, we need to know the value of the output for this question. And the output is going to be the number of students you have, the number of credit hours that we have in a course, and the amount of money that is spent by the school. So you realize that the school spends 130 and the church supplements with 100 cities. So you can break it into two. You can have what the school actually spends and what the church spends. Then you can add the two to get the total value of the output. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Yeah, but over here, you can see that I've added the 130 to the 100, which is the total amount of money spent on the, um, on the school or spent per semester, irrespective of where it is coming from. Like I said earlier, you can have it, uh, what the school spends, which is 130 times the number of students, which is 60, and the number of credits hours that you have. Okay, then that's by the, what is spent by, what uh, is supplemented by the Church of Pentecost will be the 100 multiplied by the number of students and the credit hours that you have. Okay, so when you do this to uh, put it together, you should get the 41,400 per semester per class. Right, but you can go straight like I've done because at the end of the day, you are going to get the same thing. Okay, so it's good. The, the quickest way or the shortest way would be adding the 130 to the 100. And you multiply by the number of students, the credit hours that you have per semester. So that will give you the value of the output, which is 41,400 per class, per semester per class. Is that okay? Hello? Yes, sir. Hi. Any questions so far? Hmm, not really. Sir, sir, please, with the value of input, please see if you can explain it a little for me because. I'm coming to that. Okay, so the thing you know is um, the output is by input. You need to know the value of the input. For this question, we are dealing with the value of input, but for other questions, you may be 
has to do this. Hello. Hello, sir. Please, yes. um, your voice is fluctuating, so we are not getting portions of what you are saying. Okay, I'll take my time. Okay, so we are now looking at the value of input. So with the value of, like I said, with the activity you know is your output divided by your input. And depending on the question, you may be asked to find the labor productivity where your input will be labor. Okay, you can be asked to find machine productivity where your input will be the machine hours or the cost of uh, machines or how much you spend on the machines. But in this question, you are interested in the value and this in terms of money. So we are told that labor cost is what? 6,000 per class. Exactly. And material cost is 100 cities per student per class. So when you consider a class, every student, you are going to spend 100 cities on each student for materials. So the value, this mark. Is it, sir, please, I can't hear you. I don't know whether it's from my end alone or all others. It's, it's all others. Let me, I can't hear you. Yeah, here too, here too. We can't hear you. All right, um, let me look at the microphone setting. Just a minute. We're looking at the value of input. Okay, so the value of input will be your labor cost, material cost, added to your overhead cost. So we are giving labor cost to be 6,000 per class. Material cost is 100 per student per class. An overhead cost is 15,000 per class. So we can see that material cost is per student. So we need to find the material cost per class. Is that okay? And we have 60 students in a class. So you multiply the 100 for material cost by 60. So that you can get the material cost for the class. Add it to your 6,000 or 15,000. That should give you 27,000 CDs per class. So once we have our output, we have our input. What is left is to divide the output by the input. So you can see we have 41,400 divided by the 27,000. And that gave us 1.53. Is that okay? Okay, sir. Thank you. Any question on what that we've gone to so far? Yes, please. I have a question. Okay. Uh huh. Please, there was information like the Pentecost, the Church of Pentecost supplements uh, school revenue by 100 cities per semester credit hour. So, my question is um, that amount, is it part of the revenue that we, we have to use to uh, work on the productivity factor? Yes. Yes, you have to you have to add it. But please, is it revenue and has it been worked for? 
Because I thought it's a supplement. Yes, supplement is part of what they are spending, right? It's just that Pentecost University is coming to support right. them. The school. Yes. Uh -huh. so so, mm -hmm. Productivity is a measure of your output over your inputs. Okay. Yes. Constitutes the outputs. You look at it holistically, not just what the school is spending. Yeah, but I was asking whether it's part because if they give them a supplement means it's like you have been given something like a grant. So if, if you have given the grant and uh, we are working on um, a factor of productivity, you know, I was thinking like since you didn't generate that revenue yourself, but it was given as a grant, then it shouldn't be part of. That's my opinion. I just want to get understanding. I'm not putting it on anyone, but I'm trying to analyze. I was thinking that because they and it's uh, they didn't work for it, but it was just given as a grant. It shouldn't be part of the uh, multi-factor or labor factor production. That was my opinion. Okay, let's let's understand uh, a school system. Okay, the school produces the output. The produce is actually the number of students, right? Yes, please. Aha, uh -huh. and we are looking at. What goes into producing these students? Okay. You get it. So yes. if somebody is coming to help you produce more students, at the end of the day, we are looking at the more students you produce, you produce, not um, whether you had support or didn't get support. Okay. You get okay. it. Yeah. So yeah, we are interested in how much was spent in producing the students. Okay. You get it? Yeah. Aha. Thank you. You're welcome. Is that clear? Yes, please. Thank you. Okay, let's go. So for the B part, it says if lectures work an average of 15 hours per week for 16 weeks for each three credit class of 60 students, what is the labor productivity ratio? Right? If lectures work an average of 15 hours per week for six weeks, for each three credit class of 60 students, what is the labor productivity ratio? And over here, we are looking at the hours of input. Okay, labor hours. So you multiply the 15 by the 16 to get the labor hours, which is 240 hours per class. Is that okay? And you know that uh, you don't need a 60 students here because a class is made of 60 students. So you are not interested in how many, how much hours spent per student, it's, it's just for the class. Is that okay? So you don't have to multiply it by the 60 or multiply it by the number of credit hours. Because for a class, you do three credit hours and the number of students is 60. So we are interested in the labor input. Is that okay? So you multiply the 15 hours per lecture by the number of weeks spent. And that will give you 240 hours per class. So you divide your output by the labor hours and the answer is 1.172.5 per hour. Do we understand? Yes, please. Can we go on? Yes, please. Okay. So the question two. Cafe Mondo, a coffee shop at Maboni Sauce, Abrica Espresso Americano, blends of coffee. The shop's current daily labor cost is 1550 The equipment cost is 725 
and overhead costs is 1,225. Daily demands, along with selling price and material cost per beverage, are given below. So you have the table. Okay. I will say the managers at Cafe Mondo would like to understand how adding Barakito, an old multi layered coffee, they can't drink from wherever, to change the shop's productivity. A market research shows that Barakito will bring, a new, will bring in new customers and will not affect current demand. Assuming that the new equipment is purchased before Barakito is added to the menu, Awa has developed new average daily demand and cost projections. The new equipment cost is 2000 the overhead cost is 1500 Modified daily demands as well as selling price and material cost per beverage for the new product line are given below. Okay, so first of all, we have this table and we are required to calculate the change in the in labor and multifactor productivity. The barricito is added to the menu. Is that okay? So for the change in productivity, we want to look at the old system and the new system. And then after And after adding barricito, right? All right, so uh, I want at this point, I want us to understand that we have, we actually have three measures of productivity. We have single factor, we have multi-factor, we have total factor, okay? Single factor, you divide your output by a single input. If it's labor, just labor. If it's material, if it's equipment, only that single factor. Multi-factor, you combine two or more of the factors as your inputs. For total factor, you combine all the inputs. Is that okay? But most of the time, the questions you'll be solving will be multi-factor, except where it is indicated that maybe you have to do only two of the inputs and leave the rest. We understand that. Yes, please. All right. So first of all, we have to also here know the value of our output for the old system. Okay. Before we added the barakito. So first of all, we are selling um 300 beverages at the price of 10 CDs for Arab Arabica. Espresso, we have 170. Cup sold at the cost of at the price of 15 cities per cup. Americano is 150 cups sold at the price of 12 cities per cup. So you need to combine this to get the value of the output before Barakito is added. So for the solution, you can see that before Barakito is added to the menu, our value of output will be 300 times 100. 170 times the 15 and the 150 times the 12. That should give us, we add those that together and that should give us 7,350. Is that okay? Yeah. Material cost. You also do the same. You multiply the uh, capsule, number of capsule by the Material cost that will give you the total materials you use for your production. So we add that, we multiply and add that, and that will give us 2,627 CDs, 50 pesos. Okay. So for labor productivity, right? For our labor productivity, We we'll divide our output by the labor input. Okay, and the labor input was given in the question. All right? Yeah. That's 
that the shop currently daily labor cost is for 1550 So now that you have the output, you just divide it by what? The labor cost, and that should give you 4.75. Okay. Yes, please. All right. Then the next thing we have to do is the multi-factor productivity. So multi-factor productivity, like I said, considers more than just one input. So here we are going to combine all the inputs that we have. Okay. Yeah. So combine labor, material, equipment, and overhead costs together is that okay so yes, ideally please. ideally you may want to do the labor uh, maybe the input costs separately before you come to divide or you can go this way as well but normally when you do the input cost before you come and do this it makes the work neat and very presentable so this also gave us 1.20. Okay. And after that, you come and do after Barakito is added, what will be the value of our output. Mm -hmm. so now you have to add only the 200 times 25 to whatever you had here, yeah, 7,000, because all other things remain the same. Okay. The only thing you've added now is what? The 200 multiplied by the 25. That should give us 12,350 CDs now. Then we have to do the new material cost. And again, you are just adding the 200 multiplied by 8.5, which is the new additions that we have. Okay. All this belongs to the old system. This is a new addition. So you do that, and that will give you 4,000. Sorry, that should be here. Yeah, the new material, but that'll give you 4,327.5. Right? Yes, please. That's the new material cost. Okay. So for the labor productivity after our keto is added. We have our labor cost given to us. So we divide our new output value of output by our labor cost. And that will give us 7.97. And for the multi-factor, we are going to add labor material, the new material cost, the equipment, and the overheads. OK, that should also was a certain value divided by our output to give you 1.32. Right? Yes, please. Yes, please. So now for the change in productivity, for the change productivity. Most of you were doing difference instead of change. Mm. Change is percentage. Yeah. Difference is just subtraction. You subtract mm. it. So if we say change, we are looking at percentage change, not difference. So the formula is your new minus your old divided by the old. So the new is 1.32 subtract the old from it 1.20 divided by the old multiply by 100 that will give us 10 percent so there's been 10 percent what in labor productivity Is there a question coming up okay let's go so there has been a 10 percent improvement in what labor productivity Okay, then for the multifactor productivity, the new one is 7.97. The old one was, we had 4.74. So you compute that and we have 
1.4% increase in multi-factor productivity. Is that okay? So for the B part, for the B part, we have to find how many cups of barquito will have to be sold to ensure that the multi-factor productivity increases from its current level, from its what? Current level, assuming everything remains unchanged. Okay? That means the cups you are selling before you sell the same number of cups, then what to be, how many cups do we have to sell for our productivity to change? So first of all, you need to compute the value of your output. Let's assume that we don't know the number of cups of barakito that we have to sell. So we represent that by an X. So when you work it out, you come and get seven, you get 7,350 plus 25X. Because now we are assuming that we don't know the number of cups we have to sell or barakito we have to sell or productivity to change or to improve or increase. So you work that out. Then another thing that will be affected is the material cost. Again, we don't know the cups, number of cups of barquito that we are going to sell. So it's just like putting X here. Okay, you are putting X. Uh, for the beverages sold, okay, in place of the 200 that you have up here, then you go through the entire process again. So you get your material cost as 2,627.5 plus the 8.5x. So we are saying that we want the, uh, the productivity to improve from its current what level. So the current level barakito is not added. Why am I saying so? In the question, it says what? She would like to understand, which means it is not the current situation. She wants to see or understand if we add this new um, coffee, what to be the effect? So you agree with me that it's not part of the current situation. So we cannot use the productivity after we've added the barakito, but the multi-factor productivity before barakito was added. So you have to equate that to what? 1.2. Okay. The multi-factor productivity be equated to 1.2. So it's the same process we are going to just that now you have X in there. And we are going to solve for those X. So I, uh, the, the equation is simplified into this question. 1.2 will be equal to 3, 7,350 plus 25X divided by 6,127.5 plus 8.5x. So you do your cross multiplication. That brings you to this. Group your light terms. Divide and you'll get 0 0.2027. Okay. Now, what is the conclusion? We are saying that with the current level, adding one cup of barakito will increase the multi-factor productivity. Just one cup. Now, getting 0 0.2027 means that there's some quantity of barquito that has to be added. So we cannot ignore it. But we cannot sell 0 0.2 cup of barquito. Do you agree? We can only sell one cup. Yeah. So even though you are getting 0 0.2 in mathematics, we say it's just approximately zero, but we can't say that in this case, because the scenario as it is, we cannot say, oh, let's ignore it. If, if we have zero, zero, then it means we don't have to 
add barakito to increase the uh, multi-factor. But since we had a certain value, if you look at, you run it up to the nearest whole number, and that will be one. We have to sell only one cup of barakito to increase the multi-factor productivity. Do you understand? Yes, please. Uh, do we have any question? No. Any questions so far? No, please. No, no please. Okay. I believe you understand. Uh, it's not about mastering some particular questions, but it's about understanding the approach. So please, let's get the approach. Okay. Okay. Okay, so the question three is about reliability. We have about 25 minutes. Let's look at question three. Okay. It's on reliability. And we have three designs here, and we want to choose one. So engineers at Blow wants to extend internet service beyond greater Accra to neighboring regions. After several considerations, three different system designs came up, which are shown below. We have system A which has a backup on the second component, 0 0.97. We have system B, which has two backups, the first component and the third component. Okay, then we have system C or design C, which has two backups on the second component with identical values. Right, identical value. So we have 0 0.9, 0 0.9, 0 0.9. Okay. So uh, mostly in reliability, you, you have two setups. We have the serial setup or design or the parallel. So the parallel, um, that's where we add the redundant component. The redundant component is also referred to as the backup. Okay, it's redundant because it will only come into uh, action or it will only work when other components that it is connected to fails. So till a component fails, it sits down redundant. It's just sitting down idle. It's useless till there's a problem. So we have two formulas that we use to compute the parallel arrangement. One of them is what we have down here. Okay. The uh, backup reliability of the, the combined reliability of the component and its backup will be the original component, okay, plus the probability that it will fail one minus the value of. Uh, that component, the reliability of that component, multiplied by the reliability of the backup. Okay, understand the order. All right, it's important. Understand the order and understanding the formulas is important. Most of the time, you realize that uh, the values are mixed up, and if the values are mixed up, is going to affect the final answer. Can't get it right. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. Let's go on. For system A, it has only one backup. Now, for us to get the effective reliability of the entire system, we need to collapse the backup. We need to combine the backup or the component that has the backup, we need to combine it so that in our mind, we have now created a serial word arrangement, which we can easily multiply, okay? So we are going to combine 0 0.95 and 0 0.97, but know that the reference component itself is 0 0.97. The 0 0.95 is the backup. So we calculate, the reliability 
as 0 0.97 plus 1 minus 0 0.97 multiplied by what? 0 0.95. And that'll give us 0 0.9985. Please, when it comes to reliability computations, always make sure your answers are in four decimal places. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Please, is that how many decimal places? Oh. Okay. So, what I have done, pay attention to the solution I presented, and that should give you a fair idea of what uh, the presentation should look like. Is that okay? Okay. Because when, Thank you, you. when you are a fan of approximating, it's not every Thing that you have to approach me when it comes to currency uh, money normally you know the standard is two decimal places but mm -hmm. apart from that don't be in a rush to approximate any other thing to two decimal places and probabilities normally is four decimal places okay that's why over here um, it's advised that you leave it to two uh, to four decimal places okay so, okay thank you all right, so now the combined reliability of the component 0 0.95 and its backup 0. Point, sorry, 0 0.97 and its backup 0 0.95 give us 0 0.9985, okay? So now we assume that it has, it has become a series arrangement where we can multiply the three components to get the reliability of the system. So we multiply 0 0.98, 0 0.9985, 0 0.95. This is 0 0.95, not this. Can you see the Kesa? It's actually this 0 0.95. So this is a series arrangement now. All right, so that gives us 0 0.9296. That's the reliability of system. A. Then we go to system B. Now, you can see that the third component and it backup looks like just the first system, what we had in the first system. So there's no need to compute that again. What we need to focus on, focus on is the first component or system B, the first component that has an identical backup, same value. So we we'll work that out, and that gives us 0 0.9975. So just borrow the value you had here because it's the same arrangement that you have here, okay? Then come and multiply them together to get the reliability of the system, which is 0 0.9761. Okay? So for system C, we are going to use a different formula. That is when you have more than one backup. When you have more than one backup or redundant component connected to a component, this is a formula you have to use. I realize most of you were using a formula for a single backup. If you use that one, then it means you have to do it twice. But you mm -hmm. have to also know. Please come again. You say you have to, if you use that one, you have to do it twice. Hello, sir. Please, your sound is gone. Hello. Hello. Please, you make mention that you make mention that uh, if you use the other approach, you need to do it twice, something twice. Please come again. Uh, I didn't get you. Yes. Yeah, so if you are going to use this formula, can you see my case? Yes, please. Yeah. If you are going to use this formula to work this out, you have to first take these two. Okay. Okay. And later you come and take the result of these two and this one. Okay. But if you combine all together, you are going to have it wrong. Some of, mm -hmm. some of you did that and they had it wrong. But if you use this formula straight away, you just do it. 
You get it? So why do you want to do it twice when you can do it once? You get it? So this is a formula you have to use when your backup is more than one. So it's possible to have five backups. This formula is this formula comes in very handy. It makes your work easier. So if you have four backups, then there'll be times one minus R4 there. Before we bring that uh, square bracket, right? <laughs> we understand that. Yes, please. Okay. So use this formula when you have more than one backup. Okay. So we do that and we work this out. And that gives us 0 0.999. All right. So now mm -hmm. you have a series arrangement. You've collapsed the backups. You have a series arrangement. So you multiply them together and you get 0 0.9505. Okay. So the question was just for us to compute the reliability. So that's what we have done and we are okay. <laughs> right? Okay, so now let's look at the B part. It says that it will cost glow 1005 for each 0.9% reliable component, 2000 for each 97% component, 2500 for each 98% reliable component, and 10,000 to replace a failed system. Which system would you recommend to glow? Now, the process involved is important. Okay, so you see here is where if you are not careful, you approximate, you are not going to get this value. You are not going to get this value. You get a different answer. And if it's far below the expected answer, you wouldn't get it right. Is that okay? So first of all, it says that if the system fails, we will pay what, 10,000. We have to look at the probability of the system failing and the expected cost, okay, of that failure. You get, you get it. Now, we do this often when we have to buy a phone. Now, people are switching from Samsung phones to other phones. Why? Because of the screen. The cost of failure is very, very, very high. Placing a broken Samsung screen is almost equal to how much you bought the phone. So a lot of people are looking at the expected cost of failure now before they buy a Samsung phone. If I buy a Samsung phone and it falls, it falls down and because the screen goes broken, I'll spend so much. So let me get a phone that the screen is not so expensive, or it, it won't cost me much to even change the, the touch, right? These people are making this, or they are, they are making this move or taking this decision based on what? Expectation. It hasn't happened, but they are assuming if it happens, it will be expensive, right? So that is just what we are going to do here. We are looking at if it should happen, how much will it cost us? Okay. So we have to first look at the probability that the system will fail. And that is one minus the reliability. Okay. The reliability tell us, tells us the, uh, reli or reliability or how reliable that system will function. Okay, out of 100, we are saying 92.96% reliable, which means it will deliver up to that capa capability. Okay, so we get the failure, probability of failure, then we come and multiply by what? The failure cost to get the expected failure cost. That is 704, 704. It's okay. Now, here is where people do get confused. If I bought the phone for maybe 1,500, right? And I replace a broken screen for, let's say, 700. 
how much have I spent altogether on that phone? It is 2,200, two right? Yeah, yeah. Yes, so it's the same ideas that we are putting into this. So the cost of the system itself will be the cost of the components, okay? So now you see that um, 0 0.5, we have two of it. So the cost of component 0 0.5 is multiplied by what? By two. Okay, added to the failure, expected failure cost, the cost of the other components, and that should all give us 8,204. Is that clear? Please, I don't get it so. What don't you get to? <laughs> uh, how, which of the component did you take and then subtracted the 0 0.9296 from to get this before multiplying it by the 10,000. Not, not the component, you know, in probability, we have something we call failure. Okay, yeah. the probability of success plus the probability of failure should give you one. Yeah. Okay, now the probability of success in our case here is 0 0.9296. Uh -huh. So please, I wanted to know where you had the probability of that figure from. From the system, calculating the reliability of the entire system. Yeah. Oh, okay. So this question linked to the other one. Of course. Okay. Of course. Of course. Are you clear? Yeah, I've gotten where you pick it from now. All right. Okay. All right. So, but you understand the other things that we did. After the top, I'm okay. And now that I've gotten where you pick the, okay. the that okay. one from, then we are coming to the total cost. So yes. the to uh -huh. so the total yes. cost too. I don't understand why you should add the two thousand, the two thousand five hundred, and this one too. So please, if you can explain okay. it. So to me. we are giving here. It it will cost glow thousand five for each. 95% reliable component is the same as 0 0.95, right? Yeah, yeah. Ah, 2,000 for each 97% component. 2,500 for each 98% reliable component. Yeah. That's where we are getting those values from. Okay. And you have to refer to your what? The system design. Okay. You have two of 0 0.5. Okay. One of 0 0.97. Okay. Of one of 0 0.98. Yes. Two of 0 0.95. Okay. So the cost of 0 0.95 is 1,500, but we have two of it, so we multiply it by two. Okay. We have one of 0 0.95, 97, so that is 2,000. One of 0 0.98, that is 2,500. So all put together will give us 8,204, okay. right? Yes, please. Okay, so we do the same for system B and for system what? C. You subtract the system reliability from one. The same procedure, you understand? Yes, please. Okay. And because it is cost, we go for the lowest. Okay. Like the scenario I gave, people are running away from expensive Samsung phones because see the screen is so expensive. So they don't want to spend much, they want to spend less. So we go for a less expensive system. And you realize that the one that is less expensive is actually the one that has the highest. It's not the one, it's not actually the one that has the highest system reliability, right? Yeah. Aha. Uh -huh. So don't conclude based on just that. You, you have to go further to the B. You have to work all this out. But sometimes you realize that some people just jump and they write some English. That wouldn't be enough. Okay. Okay. Any question?
Hey, yeah, hello. Huh. You see that before that for the system B, before for the system B, he said total cost is seven seven hundred and four plus. Why do you get the two two by the one thousand five hundred? The two. Yeah. Okay, I said we have the system design. Okay. Look at the components that we have. We have one of 0 0.98, one of 0 0.97, two of 0 0.95, right? Can you see that? Yes, please. Okay, so looking at the B, we are giving the cost for each 0 0.95 reliable component. So we have two of it, so we multiply by two, or you can write 1,005 plus 1,005. Okay, okay. Thank you get it now. Yes, please. All right. So then the other components, we add them together. Do you understand? Yes, please. Okay. Any other question? Okay, so going forward, uh, how do you people propose we meet? Is it going to be online like this? Would you be okay with us? Yes. How many are saying yes? Or you discuss with your um, course rep and you'll get back to me. We prefer the online. Prefer the online. Prefer the online. Provided you understand that you didn't have a problem. Me, I prefer face to face. Yeah, online. So discuss with your course rep and those who want face to face. We'll see. Okay. Face to face. Face to face. Right. Okay, so. So that means, uh, when, when will our next meeting be? Please, we will discuss it June. with the course rep. All right. So, Robin, meet again. Thank Please, you. are we done? Yes. Uh -huh. Please. Are you going to give us the, the this information so that we we'll look at it and try to get it done ourselves? Yes, because it, is, it is recorded, so refer to the recording. Yeah, please, uh, the team, please, uh, we'll be grateful if you can send us the slides to the slides. Uh -huh. the, slide the slides is what I'm talking about, so that we the can slide. sit down and work our own and see. All right, you. No. Thank you. Yes, how many? Just a half of the class. I'm not sending anything. If I'm going to take, uh, what is the name? If I'm going to take your, your mark first, go and have a look. And I'm also asking the person to send me, to send me the, the okay. recording. And then if you can sit and go through it. Because these people are not taking a class. Okay. Hello. Hello. Yes, Hello. So, my dog has said, if you have any concerns, I think you can get back to him and uh, try to those issues out. Thank you. Have a nice time.